Yusufro's father, um, he uh, he brought that slave and bound him to a ditch, and he sent a messenger to Delphi to ask the gods. But that servant died before the messenger returned, and Yusufro accused his father of being a murderer. He didn't listen to his family because. He wants to stick to his principle and he's willing to prosecute his own father just to prove that he knows what he's doing and he knows that his choices are motivated by true religion. And Yusufro is so self-righteous about religion that he forgets about his own family and the consequences of him prosecuting his father will come back to him. His family is already mad enough about him that he's actually pursuing the death of his father. So if his father is to be killed, then his family would be like flipped out and they would cut him off. And not only that, he will be remembered as someone who killed his own father, not someone who knows God's will. And that would just leave behind a terrible legacy for him. Similarly, Meletus is no different. Meletus is a strong believer who claims that he was who claims to speak in the name of God to the citizens of Athens. When he was in court, he accused Meletus, oh, he accused Socrates as a complete atheist. And when Socrates questioned him and pointed like contradictions to his accusations, Meletus doesn't care. He kept condemning Socrates. <laughs> without any like real reasons or any concrete reasons. And it's just to show the Athenians that he knows God's wills. And so Meletus uses Socrates as a scapegoat to give people an example of someone who undermines the law of, the, of Athens. But it is Meletus' lack of respect for the law that leads to this instability. And so Meletus' absolute principles take away the life not only of a great moral philosopher, but a father and a friend. When Socrates become the victim of Meletus' absolute policy, Socrates' children becomes an orphan and they couldn't care, like Socrates couldn't care for him as a father by providing with them, uh, by providing them financially and emotionally. Not only that, the Athenian youth they lost a teacher and a philosopher who guided them to be able to make their own thoughts and beliefs. And also, Crito loses a close friend just because of Meletus' absolute principles. On the other hand, we have Socrates also. Socrates will not go against his principle of living a righteous life guided by reason. So when he was unjustly accused by Meletus, he was given the chance to escape, but he rejected it. He chose not to run away because he didn't want to be corrupted by like the presence of his friends or he didn't want to retaliate against his accusers. He chose to play by the rules and that is the rule of democracy, which is waiting for the state to um, punish him and find whether his action was right or wrong. And he believes that there is no other place for him besides Athens because he thinks that running away will only prove his accuser's point that he's a lawbreaker and a hypocrite, which I totally disagree. Like, I think that Socrates was making a wrong decision of sticking to his principles because he should like take his responsibility as a parent as his top priority. And he should take the chance to run away, reestablish himself in a new safe place and make sure that he raised his children well because his sacrifice and death for his beliefs doesn't necessarily do much because the states do not use reason to judge. So there's like his death is worth nothing. So these three cases of Yusufro, Meletus, and Socrates have shown that sticking to one's principles is not always morally right. It brings more harm than good because since they follow God's will or other divine things, they constantly feel judged. They feel like something is looking over the top of their head. So they choose to not listen to other people's explanation. Buddhism is different from these three people. Buddhism doesn't have a God, so Buddhists don't have that feeling of being constantly judged. Like they are free to make their own decisions and 
Buddhism teaches people to meditate and reflect on their own behaviors so they live a meaningful and flourishing life as a reflection guided by what is best for them and for those around them in specific um, situations. So in conclusion, everyone has their own guiding principles in life, but some follow the principles to an extreme that they block other people's ideas and reasonings. And so it is a harmful mentality to have because people become selfish and they don't care about their loved ones and those around them. They don't care about their, soci their society. But Buddhism is different. It has a different approach in asking its followers to constantly reflect on their behavior and do kind and helpful things. They constantly reflect whether the situation or the choices that they're going to make in specific situations will harm other people or bring like positivity to that situation. So people should find a balance between sticking to their principles and reflecting on each circumstance to do what is morally right. Thank you. <laughs> All right, very good, Rossi. Yes, okay. Um, you know what, you guys, if you're clapping, do the little heart emoji because there isn't, there's too much, not much difference between a clap and a hand raise, right? And so, uh, yeah, if you want to raise your hand, otherwise I am literally going to call out your name. So if somebody wants to go first and get it over with, um, yeah, very good, Rossi. Uh, professor, I had one query okay. for Rasi. Good. So, uh, Rasi was saying, uh, Rasi, you, you were saying that uh, uh, a Buddhism follower, um, they, are, uh, they are free to get done with things, like, uh, and they can uh, feel that they are liberal, right? But then, and you said that we don't have a specific God, um, because like uh, we have uh, being a religious follower we we have to follow the uh, ideas and thoughts expressed in our religion but then uh, so in nepal we also have buddhism followers and they uh, they um, follow uh, god uh, buddha gautam buddha for uh, gautam buddha as their religious head so uh, is there any specific difference in the religious views of Buddhism in your country and other countries? So um, in Cambodia, B Buddha is someone we look up to, but Buddha is not a god. Like in um, any religious uh, writings or religious doctrines, Buddha is not god and Buddhism doesn't have a god. That's why um, there, there is some doctrines that say that it's hard to consider Buddhism as a religion because Buddhism is more of like principal teachings and using like, uh, like teaching people about life and what they should do and stuff, but there is no God and Buddha is not considered a God. So I think that people look up to Buddha and people want to do like certain actions similar to Buddha and like be kind, helpful and compassionate. But Buddha is not a god, at least like from the doctrines that I've read and known. So I think it's just uh, like okay. some people we look up to. Yeah. So actually, it might be because like, uh, I'm not really sure whether it is right or not. But then uh, if we go um, through the history of Nepal and if we study about the stories of Gautam Buddha, uh, we actually see that he was born in Nepal and people in Nepal, they actually uh, worship him as God. I mean, uh, we don't offer um, garlands and stuffs to Gautam Buddha, but we do consider his, him as God and we do consider him as the God of uh, Buddhism in Nepal. So um, it might be because of uh, the cultural difference as you said in your in your country you just take him up as a uh, person whose uh, whose religious views or principles are 
teachings to people so that they can actually uh, learn the meanings of life, how to live a life with uh, best principles. But then in our country, we do respect, we do uh, pray him as God. So yeah, it might be because of the uh, yeah. cultural difference. Thank you for the information though. I was not aware, like you were talking about doctrines and stuff. I, I never knew about these things related to Lord Buddha. Thank you, Rasi. Yeah. Actually, in the class, we're going to cover Confucianism, Hinduism, Buddhism. And so I like having students that know more than I do. It, and it also helps that for them to know what a very popular American professor says about them, and then they can correct it. Okay, Shanaz, do you have a question? Uh, Shamima, do you have a question? Yes, Professor. May I go ahead? Professor, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I was actually like, I want to know also like the history of, because you know, Professor, like I had some from like the from Buddhist when we were here in Myanmar. So like, Though they believe like more than us because like they they have like they celebrate like everything and they pray on time and sometimes I once in like in like the Buddhist their religions like like in you know professor like even though we couldn't pray on time for example it's like I'm saying the example like. I'm not like disagree with Razi, uh, but I got the right information from her. Thank you, the Razi. So, you know, Professor, like they believe the gods and they have like, they pray on times and like they're, they're really like focused on their religions, but maybe the cultural defense, I'm not sure. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is really, really interesting because obviously religion can be used as a weapon, right? Yeah. It is being used as a yeah. weapon against your people. But it is important to know that that isn't the spirit. That isn't what Buddha would have wanted. Right? Does yeah. that make sense, Shamima? And it's nice that you have a friend who's Buddhist because then you can... Yeah, yeah, Professor, we were in one class, so we talk about a body. So whenever we talk about the religions, then sometimes they, they didn't like, they, they are not trying to share with us because they said like it's very special and it's like those things. So I want to know one more thing from Razi. Like she said like Socrates was taking the wrong decision. It is like because of like he couldn't follow his religions or he just following like the religions. I'm a bit confused, like, in this sentence. Um, I, I said that I do not agree with Socrates' decision, and I think it's wrong, because I look at it from, like, a parenthood perspective. His a responsibility as a father and as a parent should be his utmost priority, and he should make the decision to escape and reestablish himself somewhere else safe with his kids, where he can continue teaching his kids and raise them, provide for them financially and emotionally, and then once he's able to like build like a strong foundation, then he can start like going back to educating the youth and doing what he's passionate about but his like his priority right now shouldn't be sacrificing himself for what he believes in but like escaping so that he can be with his kids yeah i also agree with that one because the father responsibility is to take care of like the assurance but i do agree with you thank you uh rasi so uh uh, sorry, uh, you were you were saying that um, Socrates he, uh, he did a, a wrong thing by not uh, letting himself escape from certain things. So uh, actually, you are uh, talking about this thing in uh, from a different perspective, right? Because uh, but then if we if we think about uh, 
uh, Socrates from his own perspective, then we can actually see that he was doing a right thing because uh, escaping from things that are unwanted or unnecessary, that are unethical is actually not good. So, but then, yeah, so you are, ta you are thinking about the perspective and uh, through the perspective of parents, then that's good. But uh, I'm just saying that if we are to think about this matter in uh, relation to perspective of Socrates, then I think that, again, he was a right person because he did not uh, want injustice. He wanted to uh, lead people to the right path. And he himself didn't want uh, himself to be in a wrong path or uh, do any injustice to any people. But then, yeah, by taking that decision of not escaping, he uh, did a wrong thing with his ch children. But then uh, if we talk, if we think about morality here, then I think that he he can be right to some extent. Okay, we have to, okay, Untari, do you have a question at all? Um, yes, Professor. Um, so I understand and see Rasi point that it's not always morally right to stick one, uh, with one principle, right? Uh, but if someone not sticking with one principle, isn't that the life is gonna be like meaningful? Because it's the foundation, it's what you believe, right? You live with this principle through your life. So if uh, someone not living with like one foundation, isn't it's gonna be like the uh, your, that someone life is gonna be meaningful? Because uh, as Rasi used an example of Socrates' life and so it's not like Socrates never reflect to his action or anything like Rasi uh, um, he, uh, Rasi also used an example of Buddhist if I'm not wrong as a compare as a comparison and he, he, and she said that uh, Buddha teach the, uh, their people to reflect on their action more than doing what they think right. And I think Socrates also reflect on his action more than it's mentioned in Plato's work because as I see Socrates is a virtuous person and he and he live what, with what he think is right and he also reflect with his action because it's what makes him appear to this person be, that he always makes sure that his action is good somehow even though uh, it said that he is an atheist but i think he still believe in the existence of god even though people claim that he is an atheism so i'm still confused about how rasi uh use socrates as an example of an unbalance of reflection but when i think there is nothing wrong with socrates yeah i mean i don't uh, understand these are different <laughs> questions. yeah because i also got confused when i written to Rasi. that's yeah it's difficult but how about this Rasi? in buddhism if you focus on karma you're really focusing on the consequences, right? Yeah. Whereas yeah. Socrates in this one case is definitely focusing on you can't ever do wrong, right? If somebody yeah. punishes you, you don't take revenge. If yeah. right, and so um, so that was so in this case, I think what Rossi's saying is that the consequences that if you were Buddhist, you would think more about the karma right, the consequences than about the principle. Uh, in most cases, in most cases, uh, when he's acting on those principles, he creates good karma, right? But this would be the exception. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to you, Rossi? Yes, Professor. Does it make sense to you, Untari? Yeah, that makes sense, Professor. But also, uh, but I think in Socrates' case, it wasn't about karma, but it was about a meaningful life. Like if you are doing something uh, bad and 
like not good and then uh, disadvantage for other people you will have you will not have a good life no i i understand that because it's actually it's your mindset right yes your little inner voice if i go against my principles i'm not going to be happy the rest of my life but yes karma i mean uh rossi would say if i don't take care of my children i'm going to be um upset with myself the rest of my life does that make sense you oh, really, that's yes. a different standard yes, of yes. and and these are really important questions because they are you know they're fundamental every human being that's ever been thoughtful has had to wrestle with these questions so if you can get down to the point where you're wrestling with the big questions then you know that okay guys nobody is wiser than you because you know it's difficult does that make sense i guess we have to move on but that that's yes. and i do think that islam is more principle oriented and buddhism is more consequence oriented but really they shouldn't have to conflict and every once in a while they do and then that those are the big questions um well the other thing about children think about this though how how many like the the buddhists military in myanmar okay shamima just think about you know they don't they aren't necessarily saying oh goody goody i get to beat up on muslims they might be saying, this is the only job I can get. I got to feed my family. I don't really want to do this. I don't like kicking these people out, but I got to put up and shut up because I got to take care of my family. There's a lot of people like that, right? And people put them in these situations where they make them do this dirty work and they know that if they don't, their families are going to starve. So what are you going to do about that? <laughs> uh, Shamima, I guess I'm just going to drop it. But has it ever occurred to you that really people might have a lot more empathy for the Rohingya than they will appear to have just because they're trying to survive? And when you pit people against each other um, to, to and at the survival level, it it really is ugly. Um, so I would say that's bad leadership. You know, leaders shouldn't do that. But. Yes, Professor. Like the leader should be like the people, like the people who are the, they should give like the same priority to everyone. But they, they should, should like, yeah, they shouldn't paint it black and white and pit religion. Yeah. yeah. That's just bad leadership. Everybody else has to deal with it. Um, Okay, let's get Poonam. Do you want to summarize your paper, Poonam? Yeah, sure. So, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So, my, my topic was uh, Athenian family versus my family. So, uh, my thesis was I want to compare my family with Athenian. Athenian. So, like the there was uh, in my first board brief, I have write about Athenian family and and then I, I I write about my family how they are similar. So like Athenian families are um, they, uh, they are a developed country and then they they are democracy. So they have democracy. So like in our our country and our society we don't have democracy so like uh, our um like in uh, in case of my family they are very uh, similar with athenian like how um, my uh, when i go to scholarship at Eudevu, so there was many people there was many people there jealous and they were saying so many things like i will be uh doing something wrong there in chitogong because uh from my family from my hometown uh, chitogong is very far so like they're saying uh like you're sending your daughter very far uh that is um she will be spoiled there and what what will be do do, do that mm. 
because one day she will be a homemaker she have to do household work so there is no need to send her there you can admit her in near near college and uh, near college so that they can just uh, graduate somehow they don't need the better study this uh, like that uh, but my family supported me and then they said no oh, oh uh, they said me to foc uh, focusing on my study uh, they don't they said I don't need to worry about it. Uh, so I write this thing in my family, and then a uh, few people like when I went AW, I started um, posting my picture on Facebook, and uh, there uh, they they have problem on that. They said, uh, "Oh, I, I already spoiled. Uh, That's why I'm posting picture uh, picture on um, Facebook." And then when I started wearing a Western outfit. So they have also problem on that. Uh, so they are saying so many things, but uh, my family supported me and they said, you don't need to worry about it. Uh, you, you, you don't need to, we don't have any problem, uh, whatever you were, we don't have any problem. So uh, don't worry about those people. So like in this case, my family, I found my family and the Athenian family the similar. And then I want to change my community because I am from a rural area and uh, I belong from a tea community where people working on a tea garden and their, um, uh, their day, day wage is 120 taka per day and uh, they, they are getting their salary per week. So like um, maybe they, they, um, people, uh, the leaders are cut their charges and then they are uh, in part day, they are getting seven, less than 700 taka. So even their family is big, so they, uh, they have to survive that family. Uh, so uh, even uh, uh, here in, in my, uh, my community, like tea community, um, uh, people, uh, as they, their salaries are uh, low, very low. So that's why they are not, um, they are not get, uh, they're not admitting their uh, daughters in college or higher education. So like, uh, I want to change that one. Uh, like, Mm, even they are uh, they married their daughter in very early age, like in 15 or 16. So I want to change that one. And then even um, my, my community is very backdated. So like I want to update my community. I want to work for my community. So I I'm inspiring being a uh, socrates so that um, I think you no know, I can change in my community and this so like that, that was my paper about okay so okay so there's similarity and difference here with family relationships and the public right so mm -hmm. just like Socrates took a stand and then he got in trouble and he had to leave his kids okay. So your parents are taking a stand and they're getting criticized. But in this case, you know, the kid benefits. So again, it's that same problem, however. Uh, how should parents, once they have kids, should they just adapt or should they take risks? Should they take risks for principles, you know, of democracy or should they take risks specifically for their children? to have opportunities. Um, so, I, I mean, all of those things are really interesting questions. And um, once you have children, I think that should be part of your mindset. That's just something you always think about. Um, but anyway, so who wants to ask uh, Poonam a question or a comment? Professor, can I? Sure, Shamima. Yes, as Punam had the good parents, like who doesn't care anything what people are saying, at least they send her like to get higher education in a UW. So I appreciate that. So I want to know one thing, as she mentioned, like people are getting the law, less amount of the salary. Is it from your job? Is it just be like, is it just because of the lack of education or because you are the female? That's why they are giving like, they are giving less amount to them. No, like 
like people when the it's it's about girls like their family like they have to maintain the family so they are they are studying their boys but not their daughters because like they said okay one day i will send them in other house so there is no need to studying there uh, studying from the girls so uh, even if uh, the boys will study they will income and they will uh, one day they will take care of my, myself the parents in that most of the parents so that is the like that's why they are uh, not study higher educated their girls what about um no i mean yeah okay shamima i think she means that um our is everybody in the town getting exploited and yeah. paid because it would be obvious they don't want to move they don't have enough money to move so the big corporate tea companies can take advantage of them um so that's why they're poor or i think shamima was saying do they pay women even less for yeah, this yeah yeah okay no. professor like in tea garden the men and women both are working so like um, men have the fixed a uh, fixed salary per day 120 taka and the women like uh, the women uh, women who are working on tea garden they have to plug the tea and then if the plug tea per like uh, per kg they are getting their uh, their uh, because uh, like inside the tea, inside the tea, tea, uh, tea factory they they can't work so they are they're sending women in the like tea, tea garden to plug in tea they, uh, the women are only plugging the tea there is nothing to nothing in any work for a woman the women are only plugging tea so if uh, they plug uh, 5 kg so they are getting 5 k the amount the 5 kg or like uh, the per kg so like if per kg have 8 taka maybe i don't know exactly so like if they are plugging 5 kg they are getting only 40 taka per day okay so i i, I think we need to stick to the main theme um so this one's interesting because i think how many of the rest of you your parents had to um put up with criticism from the people in the area because they sent their daughter away to college yes professor me Okay, go ahead. Um, actually, uh, uh, whenever I try to join in AUW, not only my society, even my relatives are saying that why you are sending your daughter in Chittagong? Uh, because we never went uh, far away from my family. So if uh, also we are Muslim, so uh, if she will not, she will not. Uh, we are Burka Urna. Uh, she will talk with boys or something like that nonsense thing. They are telling, oh my god! Uh, after after going there, you can't control your daughter. So she will be like a different. She is going to uh, she is going to switch in other religions like Christian. and they are saying like that oh my god but uh, my my mom my mom uh, listen to them but my father don't care for what they are say well actually it's just like socrates they'll call your parents an atheist and a corrupter of the youth right <laughs> actually though the other question i want have any parents lost their jobs because of that or have any parents not been able to get a raise or have they really gotten punished economically for sending you to college right so, yes professor even professor few people said, anybody any okay uh, uh, professor okay, even few people said i will be a drunker when i will uh, stay in the uh, hostel because you know like people oh, there is a uh, many countries people uh, girls uh, stay with us so um, like the my community people thinking the, the foreigners are always drinking and smoking so they are saying like uh, you will be or oh, start drinking and smoking too yeah okay so i do i do want you to realize that the stuff goes on all the time in various forms um So anybody else have a question or a comment for Puno? Cuz we can keep moving ahead. I'm um, not Go ahead. Professor. So uh, first thing that I have to say to Panam is that 
I think Darcy should feel fortunate because her parents are really supportive as they are sending her to high school, uh, uh, sorry, in uh, college to acquire higher education despite what people think and what people say. Uh, because like I, I personally think that uh, support of family is one of the most important thing in life because um, as a child uh, myself, I didn't have my own parents. I, I didn't get any support from my parents since my childhood. And uh, now I am supporting myself. And I do have some uh, people around me who uh, who are always there for me, meaning that they say that you have to be following this and you have to be following that. But then I, I, I personally think that if I had parents who could actually guide me, who could actually tell me, uh, so child, you need to go to this direction. You should be doing that. Doing this, you will become a good person or a bad person. I, I really wished I, I could have them, but since I don't have them, I, I really find that support of family is really important because like, if you have family with you, then you can conquer anything in life, I guess. Because like, I, I have faced a lot of challenges and difficulties uh, without them because you know i i remember a day in my life when where i didn't have five rupees with me because of which i couldn't go to attend my classes for my infants preparation of high school and yeah i think that you should not believe on what people say or think about you you just have to believe in yourself you have to think about your family because a family mem members are the one who will support you and you will be supporting them afterwards. You, you are not going to uh, take care of the society and neither the society is going to take care of you or think about you in future. So you just have to have faith in yourself, your potentials and your family members. That's remember all when, that will help you work a lot and move forward, I guess. Remember when Crido said, what will people think? And Socrates said, you don't worry about what people will Yeah. Think. Yes. <laughs> that's why that's why when Rasi made a point in her uh in her uh, paper, uh like he did a wrong thing uh, because he was supposed to take care of his uh, children as a parent. I know she is right, but then uh when I think about uh, from his perspective, then I think that he is totally right because uh, to be frank, we as a human being, we took birth alone and we have to go alone, right? Anyway. So I think that we have to learn to be independent. We have to learn to make ourselves happy than to make other people around us happier. Because if we do that, we will sacrifice a lot. I know that uh, making people happy is also important, but then uh, if we sacrifice our own happiness for the happiness of other people, then we will regret later in life at some point. Um, so I'm also wondering how many of your classmates, how many of your peers uh, would have been able, they're smart, but they weren't allowed to go to college, right? And was it because their parents cared about what other people think? Um, and then the other thing is, do you know any parents of any of your friends who would might have lost their jobs or lost, you know, respect from other people in a, in a way that would make it harder for them to provide for the brothers and sisters. So I don't even know if you know that, but it is interesting. And I'm sure that that's true of students who never applied, right? They just couldn't go past high school for various um, reasons like what Crido's reasons, right? What people will think or um, things like that. So my main point here is that these dialogues are about situations that everybody gets into, but variations on a theme, right? And so um, we all can identify with it. If we can notice that, oh, this is the kind of issue that it is, and in my case, it's this particular thing. Um, and so, so anyway, that's what I wanted to get at. Um, we're going so slowly. 
I think I better ask someone else. We've gotten through how many? <laughs> Two? <laughs> All right. So, and Kasturi doesn't have a paper yet. Is that right, Kasturi? Uh, yes, Professor. I'm sorry. We just have three left, and we have 40 minutes. So, I hope uh, each one of you, 15 minutes, 13 minutes is good. Um, who wants to go next? Any any of the three of you? I'm going to call you. So, <laughs> um, Professor, may I go? Sure, Shamima. My topic is like the how government make the people depressed and stressed, especially I focus the, like the Rohingya people, like how they survive in their life without any opportunity, without any ID, identity of the like the country people. So I just focus like as we know, like depression can ra can range from mild to survive, but. We in Rohingya, we people are increasingly aware of many phases of depression. Because we all know like more than 7 lakh people of Rohingya push out from their country and living in Kosas Bazar refugee camp, where they become like homeless and stateless, and without any hope, they are surviving. Like if, you, if we want to overcome in our life, at least we have some choice, like to do what you want to be, what you can do for your future. But we are living like without any dream. And we just like buried our dream deep down in our hearts. So firstly, I talk about people without nationality have no opportunity to develop their capacity, which make, them, which make us like the depression. We know like, as I give one example, like if you don't have any national ID card, how you can survive in your life? Like by living in, for example, even we feel shame whenever we go in front of the people. Like as an example, especially in a UW, when we go in front of the people, they all have the ID card. Like they all have the national ID card. Well, even though right now, People are like the AUW, like the authority, they are trying to vaccine us, but we can participate because we don't have the ID card. So we will get the less priority and we will get later the vaccine, but everyone got because they have the ID card and national ID card. Like because of that, it makes us really depressed. Even we do know sometimes we feel that why like God make us in this kind of the position. Because this is our time, like to enjoy, like to like to hope something, to drink something. But for being Rohingya, everything like buried in our heart. So, and secondly, I focus like the Aristotle article, like he mentioned, like all the human beings participate in political life, but we Rohingya are not allowed to participate. Because like, you know, like when they talk like, the government because the government didn't allow us to participate to vote like each year there is like the elections but for being the Rohingya we are nothing we can even participate to vote anywhere like whenever like this election happened we have to stay in home like everybody was in like everyone was staying in home like because we are the Rohingya then others ethnic minority group they joined to vote like where they want so like in my final depression like Rohingya people living in in Coast Bazar refugee camp where there is no security like especially for like the women there is no security they are living in the small town police center where like we sleep the place and we eat that place like we enjoy in that place because like there is a small room which is covered by tarpaulins and bamboos. Like in that shelter we are living. Ultimately our position came in that way. So you know like when we came in pastime, I can give one personal life experience. 
like when we came in Pakistan in the first Bajar refugee camp. Wait a sec. We need to get louder there. Can you hear me, Professor? Yep, now we can. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Professor. So, like, I can give one personal example, which is I faced by living in first Bajar refugee camp. Before joining a UW, like, we stay in our, like, in our shelter, in our third polling shelter. Like, we, we had, like, there is a lot of, like, kidnapping was happening, especially the girl. For that, you know, like, my mother, we are, like, seven sisters. Like, five sisters got married. The rest, we are two. The One is my younger sister. I am, like, I am the sixth position of my family members. So, my family is, like, especially my mother, she really worried about it because like there is the kidnapping, but there is no like no security. We just live in like like the like animals. Like we are staying there. So for that, like my mother at night, you know, Professor, like she did like all at night. She couldn't sleep maybe properly because we can notice. All all the night that time she tied our like our hands or legs, something. On her, on her arms because she wants that somebody like take us away, they will kidnap us. For that, like she really, even she couldn't sleep, she tried to sleep at like in a day, but she couldn't sleep at night. Because you know, Professor, like in our tarpolition, you can keep like even a strong draw to like to lock like properly or something like that. So ultimately, we become like in that kind of the position, like with those things, like we face several things, like there is like the sexual violence, like child marriage. People say that Rohingya people got like married too earlier. Is it not because of like we want to marry? Like just because like they just send in their daughters like to in a safe place, like to stay in with their husband, at least she can save in like in their family, father-in-law's family. Because like some people, they have like so many daughters, like five or six, like my family members. For that, one family cannot handle like, so they decide ultimately in that, like in that decision. But when we were in Myanmar, they got married around like 25 and 20 in that time. But after coming in Bangladesh, our culture, become totally different because of the insecure places. So in my conclusion, people fought like we people are like trying to fight to live like peacefully in our life. For that, we jump the border, cross to the Myanmar River, and we took the shelter in Bangladesh. Everywhere, they are like, they, there is the Rohingya people on the road, on the field, on the river like because of the like because we become the homeless so in bangla like uh, like uh, we came in bangladesh which is like it become like very disaster like we people didn't have anywhere to stay or any food to eat on that time in bangladesh personally we came to survive our life when we became like the blind by losing our homeland Myanmar government should should like a law as Rohingya people to attend making law process like which can promote us like the middle class but it doesn't do that they have record the criminal justice system without discrimination Myanmar government didn't have that so in that kind of like so many things like discrimination we face it makes us really depressed really depressed sometimes we feel like we will not be able to about to overcome in our life. Perhaps our position is in, in that way. We will die in this position. Okay. All right. So questions for Shamima. I think in general, she took that list of Aristotle's capabilities, especially the political ones. And she said that the Rohingya are denied all of these things that you have to do to be human. And so they're treated like they're not human beings. And then that's the way that politics affects depression. So if you remember our last day on depression and stress, 
when I transitioned into the political virtues, I said, you know, there's connections there. And so that was um, Shamima's paper. So uh, anybody have a question or comment? Um, professor? Yep. I, I don't actually have a question uh, for Samima's paper, but I'm quite curious like about uh, can Rohingya people leave and join another country? Like, can they, can, can they do that? Can I answer this? Yeah, of course. Yes, yeah. of course. <laughs> yeah. So like, as far as we know, like when we came in Bangladesh, like UK was trying to take us, but the government, Bangladesh government, didn't get the permission, like they are not allowing, because we had the hope one day we will go to our motherlands because we born there, like we have everything, we have dream over there. So, you know, like, for example, my father, he always said, I don't want, like, if the God want, like, to kill me, like, I don't want to die here because I want to die the, my father where he died. So that kind of hope we have, but around like international community, they are trying to send us in our motherland, but still our government didn't accept us. They said us, we are not the nationality of the Myanmar, for that like it become some critical. Okay, who else? Is it is it that you don't have your national IDs? You know, like it, it was like long time ago, even though we didn't born on that time, like, so it was long time ago, they just discriminating we people systematically, systematically. It's just because of the religions, we are the Muslim. So majority oh. people, like the majority people who are Myanmar, they are the Buddhists. It's a way religion gets used as a weapon. Oh, so yeah. professor, is it that, uh, Due to Samima and other people being a Muslim, the country dominated Muslim uh, because they expected Buddhism and because of that, they did not allow uh, Muslim people to get national IDs from Myanmar. Yeah, you know, like we don't have uh, the national ID. Like their dream sad. is like that. Yeah, yeah, their dream is like that. It's so religion. if we have the national, if they will give us like the national ID card or something, we can go around other countries for that they don't want to allow. And their hope is like, if they will accept us as a nationality, so they thought like the Muslim people took over or like everything over their hands. Like maybe those things. It's oh, just because of like, we are, yeah, we are Muslim. It's not just religion, right? It's a whole ethnic group. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. So that's where religion is used as a tool. Because if you just said it's ethnicity, then you'd say this is not God's will. But if you keep it on religion, you can, everybody can believe, you know, that God wants this or that. And yeah, they, you know, Professor, like there is also Hindu's religion, but they have, but we don't have. There is also the Hindu's religion. We have the Hindu's friend. But they can go where they, where they want. They can do where, what they want, but we don't have. Right. Anybody else have a question or a comment? Um, I thought it was a good idea. Let me just go through Aristotle's virtues here, just to show you not, in, nothing's true because Aristotle said so, but he noticed these patterns. And then if you apply them, you say, yeah, that's true. So. Eating, um, drinking, sex, right? So the way, you know, they don't have the ability to uh, have their own farms, you know, grow their own food. And then water, they're always, you know, having to seek out water and that's under somebody else's control. And so you can exercise a whole lot of power over people if, you know, they don't get water or food unless you say so. And then the sexual thing is terrible. So Shamima said there's no security at the gate so people can come in and out. And so there can be plenty of sexual abuse. Then with courage, the people are in a very dangerous situation because it isn't protected, right? There's no security. And so there's always a potential for violence. 
And then um, with anger, right? There's plenty to be angry about, but they're not allowed to be angry. And so they get depressed because that's anger turned inward. And it's not genetic depression, it's culturally caused depression. So the articles that we read tended to be uh, Western white privileged educated people and they were in some kind of a genetic situation, but this situation, <laughs> you don't need any kind of genetics for this. If you do, it's probably worse. But anyway, then remember rational ambition. That, you know, you, you find out your talent and you figure out how to um, uh, develop it and then you give back. Well, they can't, they have no ambition, they have no opportunity to develop their talents. Then the honor and the respect. So they're disrespected for no reason, not based on their character, just based on some external ethnicity. Uh, okay, Rossi, that's fine. Um, just based on their ethnicity and the religion gets tied to the ethnicity that makes everybody feel better because they decide God's on their side. And then, so those are all the personal issues. Then when it gets to the political, the economic system, they're not allowed to develop their own economy and develop, exercise all those capacities. Then with the making of laws, they're not even allowed to elect, you know, to participate in elections. And so the people who make laws aren't at all interested in their well-being and they are interested in maintaining the oppression so that they can keep getting reelected. And then the way the laws are applied so there might be a law that um, prohibits uh, violence, but it gets underapplied if it's uh, if it's a Buddhist Myanmar person who um, commits a crime, and it gets overapplied. And so Shamima gave an example of at least it was alleged that a Rohingya, I think, raped. Uh, a Myanmar person and there was this a huge backlash and a lot of violence and so it was an overreaction and the legal system did not do anything to prevent it so there's the the laws and then the application of the laws and the distribution of social goods is completely um, wrong and it treats again it treats them like animals basically subhuman and then the rectification of wrongs you don't punish people who do wrong to the Rohingya, but you punish the Rohingya, even if it's just an alleged uh, crime, right? You don't even bother to take them to court and have a fair trial. So I think, you know, it's a really good example of the fact that Aristotle's stuff is not esoteric and it's not overly complicated. It actually reflects people's lives and it helps you understand the layers and layers and layers of oppression and all the different obstacles. And so when you go out in life, uh, you probably will run into obstacles, but at least you'll know why, right? You have to think about all the things that have to go right in order for you to develop yourself as a person. And then uh, I guess my last punchline is that there's things about AUW that are not good you know um but you have to keep the big picture in view and you know maybe excuse me the food might not be the greatest or maybe the housing is a little crowded or whatever but if you can end up with a piece of paper that's worth something then um you do have to put up with a whole lot of stuff but the trouble with the Rohingya is they don't have hope right they can't you know, everything is depressing because they don't have any reason to overcome these obstacles because they don't have any opportunity. Um, <laughs> does that make sense uh, to the rest of you that- um, I feel scared when I hear about the food provided at uh, Ava. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't actually, it's really funny because I, wanted to eat with the students because I had the last hour of class. And, the, and after a week, I told the students, I really like the food. And they go, what? You, and then after I would eat there for about three weeks, I realized I'm getting stomach aches. I just can't. 
So there has been criticism, but I, I don't know. I mean, I just, my main point is that, you know, you, you got to keep things in perspective. Um, if there's some way that you can be an activist and get better food, that's great. And if it's you okay, try, guys, really, you, you will enjoy the HW food nowadays. We're enjoying. <laughs> oh, is it is it better than it used to be? Because we have few student professors. <laughs> <they're getting... laughs> okay, uh, one more thing, and we have to move on. But every time they would have that flatbread, um, oh, what's it called? Anyway, all the Afghan students, everybody, there was a huge Chapati, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> there was a huge long line, uh, and so you always knew that that was on the menu when you went after class and were trying to get some food because you'd have to wait. <laughs> I don't know, first, at first I thought that in AUW uh, the food are so good, but after eating one month, all the food okay. are same again and again, they are giving same food, same taste, but how we can improve. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, anyway, my main point is you got to get over it. You're going to get this piece of paper and you can buy food that you want, you know? Um, okay, so we still have a couple papers and I talked too long, but um, so we have Untari and Shanaz, right? Yes, Professor. Go ahead, Untari. Oh, okay. Um, so the title of my paper is about holiness. Are people holy because God loved them or are people holy because they are good? And um, in my essay, I tried to explore whether L.T. Prof. Sagratus was a holy man and what is holy, what situation make people considered holy, and what is holiness according to both Socrates and L.T. Prof. Furthermore, I will use my worldview of how I believe in God's permission or role in every human action, but also still think that the efforts and choices made by humans are factors that cause change in human life as the foundation of my opinion regarding this matter. In my paper, I mention one dilemma in the LT Pro, which success makes me interest. It is, if an act is morally right because God commands it, then morality becomes arbitrary. Given this, we could be or think that we are morally, morally obligated to inflict cruelty upon others. And responding to that dilemma, I think human intelligence is the key because Intelligence, or the rational part of the soul, is what distinguishes human from other living things. With reason, a human can distinguish between good and bad, and what he should do or what not. Now, with this ability to determine which is good and bad, what makes people holy? What is holiness? So, based on my opinion, holiness is quality or state of being holy, blessed, sacred, or clean. And I think being holy is not necessarily just about following a strict set of rules and behavior. Furthermore, holiness is not a way to present oneself to another so that we appear to be holy rather than truly being a holy. For example, praying in public or doing charity for the sake of another person's validation is not holiness. That is why, for me, by being a virtuous person, the person will have better self-control over himself and not easily get carried away by lust or other irrational desires. Moreover, to maintain any degree of holiness, a person needs to control all their harmful, excessive desires. And it should be noted that being holy also cannot exist without the presence of God. Prayer is one of the key uh, which is a state of mind or soul that enables humans to interact or connect with God on a spiritual level. And for LT Pro, holiness is something that is approved by all gods or God, but this is not good enough because for me, in here, LT Pro fails to prove his argument that he is a holy man or if God agree with his decision, in this argument, because at the end, we have no idea what God truly wants. On the other hand, Socrates' definition of holiness is based on simply being virtuous and helping others without expecting a reward or solely to serve God. It's showing, uh, uh, it's showing his honor to God 
by treating others with dignity and respect. Um, and Socrates' definition of holiness is also similar to how I interpret holiness is by being able to control emotion through the power of the rational part of the soul and also always trying to live virtuously in the presence of God. Therefore, as a human who believe in God, we do not know what future is waiting for us, what is loved by God, and what God truly wants us to do except the guidance God gives us, or either if someone is truly holy or not. Thank you. Okay, somebody ask a question or make a comment. Rossi, you must have something. Hi, Dr. Bike. I was, um, I didn't even get to hear the full thing because I was out to the bathroom. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Uh, it's an interesting, you know, comparison and contrast between you two. Um, but let's just let the other ones ask for a minute and then maybe we can get back to it. Um, who else wants to ask? Shamima, do you want to ask or comment? Did you, oh, Untari, did you think Euthyphro was holy? Um, no, I don't consider him as a holy man, but I consider him as a good man. Euthyphro, okay. Yes. Why? Uh, because according to what we think as a good man, this belief with what he believed, and he, and he, I, I think he never do something bad to other people, either, except for one thing that he believed that he need to execute his own father. Right, but more again, we do not know what is truly considered as a holy because it was based on God's opinion. And I don't know what God truly think about holy. That is why I don't think he is a holy because he even sacrificed his own father because it's also kind of, I'm not sure if it's desire or not. And yeah, I don't, I don't think he's a holy man because based on his own opinion about holiness itself, it doesn't prove he's a holy man. Do you think he's not holy just because he's too arrogant and too sure that he knows? Uh, I do think that he is arrogant at some point based on, I think in one, in one line of, on his conversation with Socrates that he claimed that he knows everything when Socrates said that that's what makes you knows nothing because you claim that you knows everything right and at that point that I think he's a little bit arrogant about his knowledge okay go ahead Rossi you know when Ontari was talking about um Yusufro like being holy and stuff like who is the one who gives the definition of what and who is holistic and like what actions we do are holistic isn't it like just from our own like beliefs and imagination like there's no set rules or like a doctrine where everyone agrees that okay this is holistic this isn't so like where's the like the silver lining there yes that is the point of problem that i tried to talk in my paper because once again being holy cannot be exist without the presence of God, right? Like, so even though human already set this kind of standard of being holy, but it's tough because we do not know that is, is God approved this standard or is God agree that this person is holy? Because even though human think this man is holy, we do not know what God think about this man, right? So I still do not know uh, what makes people holy or not because again, it's still at the end it's um it's up to god opinion about god what you really think about a person a certain person but we knew how to define if to determine if he is a good person or not 
Okay, so reason, reason can give us guidance, but um, faith, you just have to, what? We have to admit we don't know if God approves or not, or we have to say, as far as I know, my reason tells me this and whatever my reason tells me is also what I happen to think God would approve of, or where do you want to go with that? Oh, I think your reason give us um, kind of a reason of why we think this is a good and bad, right? It gives us a best of standard, best of to hold into that this is bad or this is good. Um, but also, oh, I actually talked with my friend, I think the other day about faith that I think I mentioned in my paper about human desti uh, destiny and faith was written in a hollow of Marcus. And I'm talking about that and they mentioned that it's, they think based on their understanding that only three things that written, not everything. So I was wrong at that or I got a confusion at that because actually there are only three things that written. It's about a soulmate, death, and oh, I forgot about one thing. So because only these three things that written on uh, Allah al-Mahfuz, it makes sense. So humans still need to try this human efforts and choice still needed to make those life success because only these three crucial things that's written on a book. Okay. <coughs> Any other comments or questions? Because we still have one left and Utari. Um, one thing we're going to talk about eventually is uh, when I read Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, it's sort of like he, he puts, you get your heart in the right place. And then you get your reason thinking, right? So it could have to do with emotionally versus intellectually. Um, anyway, that's, you know, if people, if people don't know themselves emotionally, like Euthyphro, what is his real motive? Does he know if what is his real motive, right? Is, is he really wanting to get a reputation for being super holy? And he's willing to sacrifice his dad and his relation to his family? Or, but, Professor, yeah. how, but Professor, how can we say that you, you, you treat you trip fro uh, was a, a holistic person because he was arrogant about the uh potential that he has he thought that he was a really good uh, uh religious adopter i have to say but then how do we define whether a person is holistic or not that's it, you guys. Now you're really in the middle of it. I got to let Shanaz speak. But once you know that you're totally confused, then you know that, ah, you're a philosopher. Because uh, <laughs> you know you don't know, and life is complicated. And every morning you get up, and you know, oh, my God, what am I supposed to do now? So OK, Shanaz, go ahead. OK, Professor. Can you hear me? Yep. Uh, my topic is the effect of COVID-19 around the world. And uh, my thesis is how COVID-19 has increased the level of depression and uh, astral globally. Besides the threat to their health and lives, everyone is suffering uh, economically because the only way to prevent the virus from spreading is for people to stay home. And many people cannot work or consume, leading to economic depression. The people who are from different, uh, who are from uh, poor or middle income families are facing financially problems and because uh, they cannot uh, get the jobs from um, the, uh, right now. So uh, for the pandemic and also um, um, uh, their uh, COVID-19 
uh, this COVID nineteen uh, hit the economics in the world. The people who are from poor or middle income, they are losing their jo jobs. Like they are uh, so ma many type of uh, worker, daily worker, rickshaw drivers, and the uh, labor. Um, as a result, it is difficult to survive their life with family due to the depression of economics. However, these days it seems that poor families are vulnerable to survive because they don't have any income. And uh, they are not. Uh, they are facing so many uh, difficulties with financially. So, um, in order to stop the spread of virus, the government mandated a sh shutdown on uh, May twenty six. That I uh, researched about it. So, the poorest people are those with jobs that required immediate contact with other people. So, they we are forced to quit and go home. Now they can hardly survive. Women are facing even more. Um, when uh, men lose their jobs, they get angry and depressed. Uh, the uh, the uh, women, uh, when they are uh, the men, are showing they are angry to uh, women when they come to a home. And also, the men always need to stay in this pandemic. They can't travel anywhere. So uh, uh, the uh, the domestic violence is happening nowadays. Even mother and wife divorcing because when the women try to raise the boys, their uh, boy, why uh, you are not, uh, even in uh, in our society, I have seen uh, many cases like this, the uh, husband not getting jobs, and uh, even uh, even if a boys or men, if they are not, they don't have any incomes or jobs, they, they uh, whatever uh, you did, they just got angry. Because they have, even a man cannot live without money. Uh, uh, a woman can, but uh, they try to ask why you are not doing any jobs. You have to find it. You have like this question. So and when uh, the uh, women try to raise the boys, so uh, they got angry and they are just starting divorce or beating them, uh, like this thing happening in this uh, pandemic. So the women are really straight right now. Uh, if they will boy, uh, they will raise the boys and they are get the the men are beating them. So what should they will do? Even uh, how if the if the man will divorce them, where they will go after the marriage? The parents uh, thinks that uh, their responsibility is finished right now. So uh, the husband needs to support them. So where they will go with their children? So it's really they are really stressful right now. And uh, in this uh, pandemics, the uh, men are depressed, going to depress. And after coming home, the women are stressed for the uh, what they will do. And in my conclusions, I have written that uh, 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 there are so many uh, uh, coronavirus has affected uh, two animals in the last 20 years. But this COVID-19 jumped to the uh, um, humans. Because of this virus, women are going through several diseases and are facing so many difficulties. And you know, some people are saying that in my society, this uh, virus is a punishment for the people uh, to get the good lesson that uh, whatever God wants or that they are not following so uh, some of for some of them they hold the walls hold, I mean the gobbly peoples are um, are uh, I mean uh, uh, how to say uh, uh, they are surviving difficulties only for those of them who are not following the rules what God wants. It's just a punishment for them. And I, I also think that uh, the world is changed, whatever I know. So um, I know there might be some mistakes we everybody made, but uh, this is enough that God thinks like that. Yeah, we didn't follow it. So it's a punishment for it. The, this coronavirus for everyone to get the good, good, good lesson in life. Yeah. <laughs> we have yeah, not made any mistake in the future. Yeah, we're back to God's will again, right? And yeah, um, yeah and the students will say it's God's punishment because women were getting uppity and they were trying to have right. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, guys. I mean, that's, people really believe that, right? Yes, Professor, even I believe too, not people. <laughs> oh, I mean, and you don't need any evidence. So that's why with Socrates, you unite reason and faith. Because if you don't unite them, 
you know, if you let faith not be accountable to anything except your own mind, you get, I mean, you no, know, you get some really crazy stuff and definitely you get women's oppression. Um, so I'll say one thing, and if anyone makes, wants to make a comment and you'll have to go, but if anybody wants to stay and they can stay, and I'm sorry, Shanaz, but um, again, you get um, that this is depression. It's not caused by genetics. It's not those privileged white Westerners. It's reality, right? And so you have the eating, drinking, sex are all, you know, house on fire, difficult to meet these needs. And then you have fear, courage, violence, sexual harassment. Then you have um, anger. People can't be angry. And then all of a sudden they just blow up. Um, yeah, the Black Plague. I know. Maybe that was God's will too. Um, and then there's... Um, friendship bonds, you know, you know, people aren't bonded together. There's uh, ambition, nobody can, you know, plan ahead, get a job, even a job to survive, much less develop their capacities. There's honor and respect, people don't have basic respect because they're too desperate. Um, and then this is where leadership comes in, right? Politicians really need to learn how to rejuvenate the economy how to create policies or laws, how to apply them, how to distribute social goods, how to punish wrongs. And so we really, really need good political leaders at this point because people are desperate. And, um, but that also gives political leaders a lot of leverage for corruption because nobody's gonna, uh, because it's better to have some rules and regulations than to have none. Um, so we're, you know, we're very in a very unstable place, and that's a place for a potential for even more political corruption. But the truth is, we need even more political justice to distribute what supplies there are and to punish wrong so that people don't beat each other up, right? If that, um, does that make sense to you? Okay, yeah, the Black Plague. Um, yeah, black fungus. I thought it was the black. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. The black plague. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, That's professor, there was actually a disease called black fungus as well. It occurred, I think, uh, when, uh, after some times of the starting of the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of people were victims of that disease and, uh, in Nepal and I also heard from my classmates like we had a group and people were discussing about this thing that uh, many some of them also suffered from this disease in Bangladesh so <laughs> just a random chat yeah so. okay so it is it's exactly the time that you know you guys can leave as soon as you want if you want to stay and talk about stuff but the punchline here is that you know, just, it's very hard to know what God's will is, uh, but just using your reasoning without, you know, some kind of a belief in a higher good or higher power or, uh, you know, flourishing, people can use their reasoning to do some pretty wicked stuff. And then they can call it God, just sort of, you know, advertise it that way. So um, it's pretty complicated. Um, so the ones who came today don't have to come to the next class. I'm gonna very specifically require the other students to come. If you want to come, I don't know, I enjoy talking about this, but that's my- For class. the next class, uh, if we want to come, we can, or we, if we don't want, we can't, right? That's right, and you can just come for a while. It's optional for you because you've done what you needed to do for this week. Professor, but I, I have the exam, that's why I'm leaving. Okay, I mean... Which exam do you have? I have like the computer science, it was quick. A small quiz, CS50. Oh, the CS50. But why CS50 quiz do you have this week? Is it for midterm or a normal quiz? No, is it not midterm? Midterm will be held on Thursday. Uh, okay, okay, okay. 
got it got it because we did it last week so i thought that you were, you guys were also done with it already so sorry <laughs> now we will be together <laughs> Okay. okay, so uh, as Harry, this week's post, all you would write is the question that you had for each of the papers. You don't have to do anything more than that. Um, oh, so there is no limit for the words, like the minimum? No. Oh, okay. Thank you. Of course. Have a good okay. Professor, did they used to have any word limit for <laughs> any posts? No. I don't, I have a minimum. That's, I think you, Ontari was talking about that. You don't even have to have a minimum. Professor, are you talking about the post uh, uh, class uh, reflection? I mean, post one, two, like that? Well, but I have, I have submitted every uh, post till the right. post five, but uh, it's uh, enough, right? So all, like I it, said, all I said was for this week, right? You only come to one class. And I wanted you to just write the one question you had for each paper that you heard, just so I know that you were paying attention. And that yeah. would that would yes, be Professor. more helpful. Yes, Professor. Actually, we are, pay, we are paying attention, but uh, you know, summer is break is coming, and I'm so excited to go out or for picnic like that. So right. Some questions, so it might be I will forget or. Well. <laughs> Actually, I mean, you don't have to post for this week. I'll just, I'll cross that one off because you were all there. You were all engaged. I don't, you're fine. Thank you so much, Professor. Yeah, for you. no problem. Uh, professor, so uh, <laughs> when I heard, uh, when I listened to the papers presented by <laughs> everyone in the class, I, I got that each and every of them had a different topic. Research topics were ex uh, absolutely different. So is it that, so I think that uh, there is no specific mentions, mentions about uh, what we are exactly supposed to do. I mean, uh, is it that uh, we have to- you. Wait a second, wait, wait. Um, okay. On the stream, there is a list of topics. That's where they're coming from, okay? okay. So, um, let's see. Wait a sec, which class is this? Oh, sorry, wrong class. Um, there, let me just show you so that you know. Um, I had all the information about the paper. Let's see. And then I had the I am confused because I started joining yeah. in class after right. they had already started writing right. the paper. So <laughs> yeah, actually, you just scroll through. So here's this, here's the schedule once again, the paper rubric, the syllabus, okay, and then here's the paper one topics. And there are lots and lots of them. See? So that's why the students were coming up with different things. They were they were just on the things we read. So, you know, you still have to play catch up, Kasturi, but I think if you just keep going class by class, then you'll understand when you get to that point where it has the paper topics, right? You will have read Socrates, you will have read all these, the Crito, the Euthyphro, uh, the Apology, that's all. Yeah, of Professor, right now I am on the creatures part. So, okay. yeah, apology part, I did it. And uh, so uh, it's because I was not in the class where you discussed about this part, and I have not reached this part as well. So, because of that, I, I get confused. I'm so sorry. Right. And then you can go through the videos. And then, then we have a, a day on Aristotle's. Uh, there's a 25 page reading on Aristotle's virtues. And we actually didn't talk about Jesus. So you don't have to worry about that. And then we had the, the one about depression and stress and the one about the biology of the spirit and the one about revenge and forgiveness. And so some of them were related to that. I didn't actually have specific topics on the stress and the depression, but the students decided to pick on that and that was great because they gave great examples, right? Of how COVID and how the Rohingya Muslims, how those situations create a whole lot of depression. So 
Um, if you want to come to me before you finish your paper, if you have an idea of a thesis, and you that's what I used to when I lived on campus, I used to require students to come. Um, but I don't know that we're online just because too many students have network issues and you know, you can use your own motivation, right? You decide. Usually when a student comes, they go away with a better outline and some quotes and things and they can write a better paper. But if- Yeah, Professor, I will do that yeah, because okay. I'm still working on my post, so yeah. Yeah, it's I, really I'll do that. I'm just not going to force it anymore. Uh, um, and professor, so uh, I uh, you were saying that you would you would be writing and sending out an email to Miss Naomi, Professor Naomi, oh, yeah. regarding. I yeah, I wrote that. I wrote it down and then I forgot and then now it, I have it. So there. because uh, uh, I have to submit my degree plan by the seventh. Oh. And I have to mention the courses that I am taking right. now. So there yeah. I have just mentioned I have been taking WSCM for now. I have want, I have just saved it. I need to uh, rework and I have to submit it. That's why. Right. What do you know? Do you remember what day was your first day of class for those classes? Do you remember when? Um. <laughs> I don't really remember. Uh, I need to check it. I well, guess. anyway, I'm going to write that email. It's right here, and I did forget, and I apologize for that. But I will get it done in the next hour, okay? And it will be yeah. and Naomi and um, the registrar. Uh, I'm going to do it to all four of us. And... Uh, professor, I think I joined in 